Namaste. So I'm trying out a new camera today. It looks a lot better. <laughs> it's much sharper. I won't have to artificially sharpen it in post-production. But I was going to do a whole musical thing and uh, everything, but I'm just so happy. I'm so satisfied. I'm so mellow. I just don't have the ambition to make a big production out of this. But I want to share it with you because it's, it's really so important to me personally. And I think if you follow our work, it'll be important to you too. That there is a way to attain Turiya, the fourth state of consciousness. As you know, the first three are waking, jagrat, dreaming, svapna, and deep sleep, or sushupti. But then beyond all those three, there's another one, turiya. Turiya simply means the fourth, because it's quite indescribable. <laughs> so now, of course, I'm going to go ahead and try to describe it. <laughs> but... It's not really so difficult. Turiya is the junction or the meeting of the other states of consciousness. Because it is the, the container that holds all the other three. So when you go, for example, out of dreaming and into waking, you have to go through Turiya. Now, most people just barge right through Turiya and don't even know that it's there. And they just wake up, especially if you have one of those horrible, uh, devious torture devices called an alarm clock. Never allow an alarm clock around here. Because when you come out of dreaming, before you become aware of your body and your senses. There is a moment of Turiya. So this moment should be cherished. It should be cultivated. One should develop the skill of entering into Turiya through this moment, this opportunity. And how is that done? Well, for me, it came, the ability came naturally by chanting the mantra of the goddess. The Mahasodashi mantra, or what seems to work even better, at least for me, is the Chamunda mantra. We did a video a little while ago. Here's the link that describes that mantra, which is very powerful in many ways. But I have found it's very very good for staying in the middle between waking and sleeping. You can do this either at night when falling asleep or in the morning when waking up or if you happen to wake up in the middle of the night uh, like I do often wake up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and just spontaneously go into it and the mantra will help you stay awake without getting involved with the body and the senses. This is very important because the senses are distractions. They'll call for you, hey, I have an itch on my leg. Hey, you know, <laughs> I have to turn over. I'm not comfortable or whatever. You know the, how the senses are. They're always competing for your attention. So if you don't give them your attention, you have your attention on your mantra. 
then the senses can't bother you. So this state is actually a form of samadhi because there is no input from the senses. The senses are quiescent. The body is relaxed. You're not trying to do anything. There's no sensation of time. You're in the present, in the present moment only. Now, if distracting thoughts come up, the power of the mantra will keep them away. That's one reason why the Chamunda mantra is very good for this. She will slay all those demons of distracting thoughts. Huh? Cha Munda. Chanda means a demon who is very violent. And Munda means like mundane. Someone very low, very low class huh? and bad taste and so on. And so are these thoughts. So in other words, you're balancing between these two states of consciousness, dreaming and waking. You're focused on your mantra. And it's like you have one on either side. It's a very strange sensation. It's like dreaming is on one side and waking is on the other side. You're not fully in each, but you're somehow in both. And of course, surrounding everything is the blackness of deep sleep. Mm. This is the void, sushupti, the emptiness. So, you know, the Buddha trained his disciples by means of exercises in meditation called the jhanas. And there are eight jhanas. And they deal with all of these different states of consciousness. So that when entering Nibbana, which I believe is identical with Turiya, that one can maintain the state without getting distracted by the different qualities of consciousness. So one must learn, for example, to deal with dreams. Many years ago, back in 1980s, when I was meditating for the very first time, and I was in an intensive, I was just doing nothing but sitting meditation for weeks. And this is when I had my first big experience of Brahman. I noticed something, that when I was sitting, especially early in the morning before breakfast, and I would nod out, you know, <laughs> just go into sleep for a few seconds and then wake myself up and try to continue meditation. I noticed that after nodding out, my meditation was better somehow. It was sweeter, smoother, and there was less distraction. I think this is because I dipped into the dream state just for a few seconds, or maybe even deep sleep, just for a few seconds. Svapna or Sushupti are both categorized by ignorance. So even though one goes into ignorance, if you get yourself right out of it, you know, snap out of it. But some flavor of those sleep states still remains. So I found out very early on that nodding out while meditating isn't necessarily a bad thing. It doesn't mean that you're insufficiently vigilant or I don't know how people describe it. I don't really, you know, I don't really watch other videos or read other people's books only the original scriptures. Anyway, I found practically by experience that going into sleep, nodding out for a few seconds, doesn't really stop your meditation. In fact, it makes it better. So I never used to fight when I felt sleepy in meditation. And lately these days, I'm not even sitting. <laughs> I'm not even formally sitting for meditation. I'm just relaxing in either the evening or the morning after waking up. It's really best for me anyway, after waking up. Because I find in the evening, either if I'm really tired,
the mind is dull and it's hard to concentrate. Or if I'm not tired enough, the mind is active from everything that happened during the day. And there's all kinds of thoughts coming and going. And the mind is too much active. But waking up in the middle of the night or waking up early in the morning after a full night's rest, one can come out of sleep very slowly and gradually. Huh? Do you remember what it was like when you were a kid and you didn't have any schedule? Uh, this is before the torture of school. Uh, you didn't have to be anywhere. You didn't have to do anything. When you're like three or four years old, you could wake up slowly and come out of the dream state gradually, gradually. Well, this is even better than that. <laughs> this is such a deep pleasure. I'm already becoming addicted to it. And I can see, I can understand why sages who have mastered the art of staying in Turiya really don't want to do much else. It's like, why would you want to come out of that if you have developed over time the ability to stay in it? It's so pleasant. There's no diverting senses. There's no distracting world. Huh? There's no personality. There's no ego, no desires, no thoughts, really. Just a few leftover dream images maybe flickering here and there. But really the mind is very quiet. And then on top of that, you have the pleasure of being in Turiya. And here's the really interesting thing about Turiya. In waking consciousness, the senses are the objects. And then, of course, there's the objects of the senses. But let's not get into all of that. We discussed all that in detail in the series on Drig Drishya Vivekaha. Here's the link. But when you're in dream consciousness, the mind is the object. When you're in deep sleep, there is no object. And when you're in Turiya, the three states of consciousness themselves are the objects. So this is a very unique state because it's abstracted even beyond consciousness, ordinary consciousness. Consciousness itself is an abstraction, of course. It's a symbol, a yantra. And so consciousness, because it has an object, is dualistic, and that's okay. And Turiya is also dualistic, but instead of outside things or the mind being the object, consciousness itself is the object. And so, of course, we discussed this a long time ago in the Secret of the Golden Flower series, but we didn't fully realize the significance until just recently. So the state of Turiya is so pleasurable that after coming out of it, the fragrance of it lingers for a long time. For as long as you don't distract yourself with a lot of activity. I have to go out and do some food shopping and I'm kind of, I'm kind of you know, resisting it because I don't want to ruin this beautiful mellow mood that comes with the experience of Turiya first thing in the morning. But that's okay. It'll be there again tonight. <laughs> so I'm offering you all the opportunity and begging you to, to take this opportunity to discover this most wonderful state of consciousness in which eternity, knowledge, and bliss are accessible and which everybody already has. Huh? It's just that it has to be... Uh, recognized, first of all, and then cultivated by practice. And soon you'll be cruising in Turiya. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.